This is the new MX Creative Console by Logitech. This device lets you speed up your workflow by programming different tools and actions to these buttons and dials. Today, we'll help you figure out if the MX Creative Console has a place on your workstation. Let's jump on in. If you're an editor or you do any creative work, you might have seen me use a Loop Deck device on my channel before. After Logitech acquired them in 2023, MX Creative Console is what they've been cooking up. The aim was to make it easier to use, more compact, and eliminate the need to look down so you can be more productive and focus on the creative. So let's dive into what it really does. So the MX Creative Console is essentially two controllers. You have the keypad and the dial pad. The keypad has nine fully customizable buttons to add any commands to with 15 pages per app. And yes, all these buttons will change depending on what software you are using. Here you can save different button layouts for each software into profiles. And a lot of apps have pre-made profiles that you can download to get a quick start. As for the dial pad, it has more buttons to assign things to. But in addition to that, we have the big dial and a roller for adjusting parameters. And the dial is also contextual, meaning that it can change depending on which commands are selected. For example, the dial could be used to adjust my computer volume by default, but once I click the Photoshop brush tool, turning the dial will now change the brush size. Pretty handy, huh? And that's not all. They also have an action wheel that can be activated with whatever button I want. Once pressed, a wheel will show up where my mouse is on screen to give me even more options to do whatever I want, like color grading. Now that you have a better understanding of what the MX Creative Console does, let's go over everything that is inside of the box. Obviously, we have the keypad, the dial pad with pre-installed AAA batteries, a stand, a USB-C to C cable, and some documents. As you may notice, I don't have the MX Creative Console with me, and that's because I do less and less editing on this channel. So I told Logitech to send the device to my editor, Jiva, as someone who edits daily, he would get much more use out of this device and have a lot of tips to share. Also, Logitech is a sponsor of this video, but they gave us full creative freedom to give our honest opinion on this device. And thanks to their support, I can now give Jiva a pay raise. Here's how you set everything up. The keypad connects to your computer via the USB-C cable. The dial pad is wireless. I could connect it to my computer using Bluetooth, or since I'm already using the MX Master mouse, I was able to connect the dial pad to the same bolt receiver that comes with the mouse. After a brief setup process on the Logitech Option Plus software, they will start to detect which app I have on my computer and which one has a pre-built profile I can quickly install. For some apps that don't have a profile yet, I can start from a blank slate and set up all the buttons myself. Here are the list of apps that currently integrate well with the MX console, which means these apps will have buttons and commands ready to be added to the console. For apps that aren't integrated yet, I can still create a blank profile and assign any keyboard shortcuts I use to the buttons. Hey, Jiva. Yo. So you've been using the MX Creative Console for a few weeks now. So what do you think? Yeah, it's surprisingly great. It did took a few days to get used to, not the setup part, like the setup process was quick and easy, but it's more about customizing it in a way that would actually be useful to me, you know? But once I got that figured out, it has quickly become an essential part of my workflow now, actually. Here's how you customize the buttons. After downloading a pre-existing profile, you will get buttons pre-assigned, but not all are ideal. For example, by default, they assign these buttons as undo and redo, but I'm already used to the keyboard shortcuts for that. So it wouldn't really be productive for me to relearn my whole muscle memory just for undo and redo. To change it, make sure you're in the right profile. Global is the default profile for when you're not in any specific software that's like linked to another profile. I can look for commands on the right panel and drag in ones I want to any button. It's that simple. The ones with the rotate icon at the end means it works with the dial and roller. I can look for software specific commands or even add keyboard shortcuts to the buttons. Or this might get a little crazy, but I can also add multi-action buttons. For example, I can have it open up my assets folder, project folder, Premiere Pro, and the Adobe Creative Cloud app all from one button. Then I can customize the button's look like changing the background color, changing the text, or even import an image because these small screens are actually pretty high quality. They also got an icon library on the side here 
Although <laughs> nothing shows up here yet because I'm still in the beta app. Another thing I can add are smart actions. It's kind of like multi-action, but it also works with other MX devices. So if I already have one from my mouse, for example, I could also apply it to the console. I could also download other people's smart actions. Too bad there are only two of them from Premiere Pro right now. The marketplace is where I can download more icon packs, profiles, or even new software integrations when they become available, which is very neat. So since we're here on Premiere Gal, what are the top three Premiere Pro shortcuts you use the most when editing with the console? Well, <laughs> I don't think I can narrow it down to just three. I mean, I'm still changing things around pretty often. Actually, how about, let me just show you how I set up my current Premiere Pro profile. So the idea is to add commands that would actually save me time. Pretty simple, huh? On the first page are my most used buttons. This one opens up the effects panel. So no more getting lost on all these tabs. This button will turn on and off the safe margin. This one does fast forward because it's way faster than moving my hand all the way to the L key. Is that the L key? Yes. Since the MX console is on my left, I try to put key commands that I use often, but are mostly on the right side of the keyboard to my keypad. So I can press them quickly with minimal hand movement, like this red button, which is just the delete key. I also made two smart actions. When I press this, Premiere will open up the audio gain panel, type in either six or minus six, depending on which button I press and hit enter all from one button. The adjustment layer button is very interesting. I actually never knew you could turn any layer into an adjustment layer just by right clicking and choosing this option. So I added this as a command. Now I can duplicate my footage and quickly turn it into an adjustment layer. On my second page, I added buttons to quickly zoom in or out in the program window and some keyframes related stuff. My last page just has all my most used label colors. As for the dial pad, I mostly use the main dial to jog back and forth in my timeline. And this button is basically just spacebar, so I can play and pause quickly while my hand is on the dial. This button will open up the action wheel, which gives me quick access to commonly used parameters from Lumetri Color. This is super useful for quick color correction, or sometimes I just use it to like quickly add Lumetri Color to my clips without having to dive into this effects panel. Okay, you know one thing I wish it had? is the ability to add any effects with a push of a button. For instance, I work with green screen assets a lot and it would be such a dream to press one button and outer key just gets added to a selected clip or Gaussian blur or any effects in general. Yeah, I totally agree. And to be fair, I don't think there's any devices right now that you can actually link to specific effects because I think it's a limitation of Adobe's API. In fact, right now you can't even connect effects to keyboard shortcuts even. Yeah. But I did have a chat with a person from Logitech and funny thing is they asked me to write a little letter about how useful this feature would be, which I did obviously because I want it so bad. So let's hope they get it figured out with Adobe. The good news is you can already do this with After Effects. So I was able to add all my most used effects onto these buttons and that has been making my AE workflow much faster. Nice. I'm glad that they're open to suggestions and feedback. So what other software have you used? the MX console with. I tried After Effects, Photoshop, and Ableton Live, which is a program I use to like make music. For Photoshop, it's been pretty nice actually, since I'm not like that pro at the, you know, key commands in Photoshop yet. So I was able to add my most used tools to these buttons and using the dial to change the brush sizes and even the roller to do like quick zoom in and out has been pretty convenient. As for Ableton Live, it's been pretty useful. I know this is Premiere Gal, so I'm not gonna go on any tangent about like music program, yeah. but if you got any music producer watching the video now, I would say the MX console is useful, but using a proper MIDI controller is still a better option. For for making music. And here's another question. Does this work with Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve? Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve aren't properly integrated with the MX console yet, from what I can see. When I check the marketplace, there isn't any profile for those softwares yet. But like I've said earlier, you could still create a blank profile and assign all your favorite shortcuts to the buttons. I think that their marketplace is super smart because I think it helps them evolve. Uh, for the longevity of the MX console, right? Because they can add future software integrations down the line and make updates, which they already said that they will, just, you know, ensuring that the MX console is future proof. So Jiva, to summarize everything, what are the pros and cons 
of the MX Creative Console. My first pro has to be customizability. Also, it doesn't take up much space on my desk at all. And the fact that the dial pad is wireless is actually great. I can use it as like a portable controller for when I like watch a movie or something. So I can even be like far away from the computer and like lower the volume or even just mute you with this button. Great, but let's not do that right now. Too late, I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> Another pro would have to be how much time it's gonna save me in the long run. I mean, I don't even think I've used the full potential of these MX consoles yet, and I'm, I mean, I'm already loving it. <laughs> like I've said, I'm still switching things around as I go, so it's only gonna get better and more useful from here. And what about the cons? Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> you're still <laughs> muted. <laughs> There are a few cons. First being is still a bit buggy, like, you know, the icon library I mentioned earlier being empty. Or sometimes the console just gets confused on like what profile it should be switching to right now. But it does seem like the dev team is working hard to get everything fixed. So hopefully by the time this video comes out, uh, none of the issue persists anymore. The only other con would have to be the limitations. The MX Creative Console has deep integration with most Adobe apps. But if you're using any other software for work, I would suggest checking if what you're using is well integrated with the console or not. So here's the big question, Jiva. If the MX Creative Console was not sent to you to review, would you have bought it? Okay, all right, that is a big question. Honestly, if you would have asked this question before I got the chance to test this out, the answer would probably be no. <laughs> But now that I've actually used it, it has become a lot more useful than I anticipated. So the answer would probably have to be yes. Thanks so much, Diva, for helping us review this product here. And thanks to Logitech for sending it out to us early to have a first look and share our thoughts with you. If the MX console looks useful to you, be sure to leave a comment below or ask any questions in the comment section. So as always, stay creative and keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.